Imagine you found yourself in some large, strange house. You're invited down to the basement, where you navigate a series of winding corridors, only to enter a room through a hidden door that opens when a certain book is pulled out of a shelf. Once in the room, you're greeted by a bunch of men wearing antlers on their heads and looking rather serious. They then start chanting some prayer that's 500 years old. It sounds like the stuff of fiction, but secret societies do indeed exist, and sometimes members of those societies engage in some pretty weird rituals. Today, we are going to take a look at some of those societies. The Improved Benevolent and Protective Order of the Elks of the World Yep, so now you're thinking that there's no way a secret society could exist with a name like this, and we're making it up. We're not making this up. The Improved Benevolent and Protective Order of the Elks of the World, according to a newspaper report from 1907, is claimed by members and officers that it's one of the most thriving secret societies among Afro-Americans of this city. According to the Smithsonian, this society was created in the late 19th century after two African-American men were not allowed to join another society called the Benevolent and Protective Order of the Elks of the World. They just started another, with the word improved in it. Apparently anyone can join and there's nothing too strange about this group, but you do have to believe in the Christian God to get in. Right now, there are something like half a million members around the world and they have around 1,500 lodges. When they meet, they do share in a ritual and we went online to find who was speaking at a meeting and what they did. We found names such as Exalted Ruler, Inner Guard, and Esteemed Loyal Knight. It seems they have prayers and lengthy opening sequences and there are also initiations. Part of one such initiation read, when the obligated brothers are asked the questions as to what they most desire, the esquire and assistants will whisper distinctly the proper word in the ears of the brothers so that they can reply correctly. The esquire, when ordered to remove the blindfold, should see that it is done promptly and simultaneously at the sound of the gavel. It gets a bit stranger, but hey, this is a secret society and there's usually something ritualistic going on. Some of it sounded quite nice though, with one of the closing statements being, let no brother go forth with any bitterness in his heart and may we ever act with fidelity to our obligations and thereby merit the approval of the exalted ruler of all. Brothers will unite in singing the closing ode. The Knights of Pythias The same goes for this society that was also founded in the late 19th century. It's all about brotherly love. It just happens to have a really cool sounding name too. No doubt you'd feel quite cool if you could say you were a Knight of Pythias. We don't think these people carry swords though, or have a thing for slaying dragons. The society is actually partnered with the Boy Scouts of America, so fighting or rescuing maidens is probably off the table. This is the introduction on its official website. The Order of Knights of Pythias is an international non-sectarian fraternal order, established in 1864 in Washington, D.C. by Justice H. Rathbone and was the first fraternal order to be chartered by an act of Congress. The society says it has its own traditional rituals, but in the end the whole thing is about charity, love, doing the right thing by the brothers and society at large. It seems you might have to be a member of the government to join and we didn't bother filling out the application form. We saw a bunch of photos too and while the name of the society might make someone think of dark hallways and blood-stained books, they do actually look a bit more like Boy Scouts. They sound like a great bunch of guys, with a part of their principles being things like this. Pythians know one way to happiness is through service to mankind. Pythians believe that friendship is an essential ingredient in life. Pythians make benevolence, kindness, generosity, and tolerance a reality in their lives. After hearing that, who wouldn't want to become one of these knights? International Order of Saint Hubertus This secret society sounds a little bit different in that many of its members are supposed to be elite hunters. It goes back to 1695 and, according to its own website, was put together to find the greatest noble hunters of the 17th century, particularly in Bohemia, Austria, and countries of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, ruled by the Habsburgs. The Smithsonian tells us that German leader Adolf Hitler shut the society down after another Nazi leader was denied entry into the club. Nonetheless, it started up again and it's still around now. In 2016, the Washington Post broke a story about high society Americans meeting for a weekend of hunting and we guess some amount of ritualistic handshaking. The Post wrote some hold titles such as Grand Master, Prior, and Knight Grand Officer. The order's name is in honor of Hubert, the patron saint of hunters and fishermen. This looks like quite the elite group and we doubt you can just waltz into a meeting. 
Some of the members got into that ranch by private plane, so we figure it's no Boy Scouts kind of outfit. They dress really smart, and if you go to the official website, you'll find that one of the main things with this group is conservation and keeping game species around, presumably so they can hunt them. This is a short snippet from that site explaining how things go down. The IOSH is headed by a Grand Master. Currently, His Imperial Highness Archduke Istvan von Habsburg Lothringen, Archduke of Austria, and its protector is His Majesty King Juan Carlos of Spain. Archduke Istvan is supported in his governance of the order by the officers of the Grand Chapter. The Grand Chapter is comprised of the Grand Priors, or leaders of the national jurisdictions in which the order is established, members of the staff of the Grand Chapter, and three counselors. It's not a religious organization, but we guess if you want to join, you'll need to know someone who invites you. From what we can see, members will need to invest some cash at times, so we doubt most of our listeners will be joining anytime soon. We are guessing that the investment will be considerable. The Independent Order of Oddfellows Now this sounds like an organization you could join. While the former bunch might be a bit snooty, who doesn't like someone admitting to being a bit odd? It's said that it came about after the Prince Regent of the United Kingdom, George IV, didn't want to go through the long initiation process to become a Freemason. It seems he made this rival club sometime in the mid to late 19th century, but its members might tell you it goes back much further in time. It's had some pretty big names on its list, with British Prime Minister Winston Churchill being a member. This is part of the mission statement taken from the official website. Lodge degrees and activities aim to improve and elevate every person to a higher, nobler plane, to extend sympathy and aid to those in need, making their burdens lighter, relieving the darkness of despair, to war against vice in every form, and to be a great moral power and influence for the good of humanity. It is all-inclusive, apparently, stating that it might take anyone, regardless of social standing, race, religion, gender, sexual orientation. They have a Facebook page and lots of events going on. It seems if you want to become an odd fellow, then you can go for it. The Patriotic Order Sons of America We think you might have a chance at joining these guys too. What do they do? Well, the clue is in the name. They're American Patriots. If you want to join, their official website says you must be all native-born or naturalized American male citizens, 16 years and older, who believe in their country and its institutions, who desire to perpetuate free government, and who wish to encourage a brotherly feeling among Americans, to the end that we may exalt our country to join with us in the work of fellowship and love. From what we can see, these people like to brandish flags a lot. They're very keen on that American flag, as well as preserving anything related to it. The motto reads, God first, then country, then order. So forget about joining these people if you don't do church or don't have a flag fastened to your house. This is part of the intro on the group's principles part of the website. Next to love for the Creator, we believe that patriotism is one of the highest and noblest desires of the human soul. We are a patriotic fraternal organization that embraces the principles of love, forgiveness, and grace, while recognizing the diversity of other faiths and cultures. It also writes, We must protect our form of government and preserve it from the influence and control of any un-American sentiment or power, whether native or foreign. The Ancient Order of United Workmen this society was set up to defend the rights of the American working class. It offered insurance for the working class people against sickness, accidents, or death. It might have also helped working class folks with burials. It started off predominantly white and religious, but that changed over time. It seems it was going strong right through the 20th century, but we're not sure if it exists today. We can't seem to find much information about this group after the 1980s. The Ancient Order of the Foresters These guys are still going, but it seems they changed their name to the Foresters Friendly society. Started in 1834, it was also about protecting the working class. It's not really about forests, though. Its website explains, Our first members came to recognize they had a duty to assist their fellow men who fell into need as they walked through the forests of life. This need arose principally when a breadwinner fell ill, could not work and received no wages. Illness and death left families financially distressed and often destitute. We should say this society is based in Britain, and from what we can see, it looks more business-like than a society where you'll find lots of traditional rituals. The Grand Orange Lodge This was set up to protect Protestants in Ireland, but you'll find members all over the world. Its website states, Orangeism is a positive rather than a negative force. It wishes to promote the Reformed faith based on the infallible word of God, the Bible. 
Orangeism does not foster resentment or intolerance. Condemnation of religious ideology is directed against church doctrine and not against individual adherents or members. It also says that while it might have been called secret, walking about in bright orange is hardly keeping your head down. It's not the most secret society on this list, that's for sure. We went to their upcoming events page, but it seems as we write this, not much is going on. We did see though that these orange guys will be doing a lot of marches in Ireland in 2019. You don't have to be Irish to join either, with the website stating, we continue to welcome an increasing number of international visitors to our celebrations who are keen to experience firsthand the spectacle of the biggest day in the parading calendar. They've even got their own newspaper called the Orange Standard. So if you were to join just one of these societies, which do you think you'd choose? Can you tell us about other secret societies? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, The Most Powerful Families Who Secretly Run the World. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.